Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. David and Kevin both sent me a story that Ars Technica ran, and this is <laughs> when you hear a scam and you go, okay, I've heard of that scam before. And somebody puts a twist on it. You go, oh, that's an interesting twist on that scam. And then somebody puts another twist on it. You go, wait a second. How many times can we twist this scam? So this one is just hilarious, but also unbelievable because it's, it's so wrong. But Kevin Purdy wrote this. Fake AI law firms are sending out fake DMCA threats to generate fake SEO gains. A lot of fake stuff happening here, and it's quite complicated. But basically what's happening is there are fake law firms being run by somebody who's basically had AI create some fake law firms and generate some correspondence that then gets sent out to people who run websites telling them that they're in violation of some sort of copyright law and they need to immediately credit these photographs on their website with this link that's been sent to them, or they'll get sued under the copyright law. And it looks like one of the things they're trying to do here is simply help the people who are in cahoots with the fake AI law firms. They're, they're helping clients get better search engine optimization. And I'm going to have to explain some of this because some of you won't know at all what I'm talking about here. But if you have a website, like I've got a, I've got a website, latoslaw.com, okay, latoslaw.com. And, and so my website is one of many websites out there that are competing for the eyeballs of the internet. So if somebody goes onto the internet and types in, I don't know, Michigan Lemon Law, I want them to come across my website. But there, as you might imagine, are other attorneys and, and Lemon Law law firms in Michigan and elsewhere also competing with me to get the attention of the people on the internet. So search engines go out and look around at all these different websites, and you might ask yourself, how does a search engine pick who goes where in the list? And so you want to optimize that for search engines, and there's things you can do in the hopes of getting your website higher up the list of results, and that would be an optimized search engine situation, a search engine optimization. So one of the things that you can do is if other people put links to your website on their website. Of course, not a lot of people are going to do that just out of the blue. Like, I'm not going to wake up one morning and go, hey, I'm going to put a link to my opponent's website on my, on my website. Uh, but on the other hand, there are websites that might say, oh, oh, uh, if you need help with Lemon Law, contact Steve Leto. Here's his website. So sometimes it's done by people who are trying to help you out. Sometimes it's done for whatever reason. And of course, here... They say that these people behind the fake law firm threat letters are hoping that you'll go along with them and to avoid the lawsuit, that you'll put a link to their client's website on your website. <laughs> that sounds like a long way to go, but of course, the letters also threat some kind of monetary harm too. So a journalist found himself the center of all this over a key fob photo he put in one of his stories. So if you run a website, getting a copyright notice from a law firm about an image on your site can trigger some fast-acting panic. As someone who's paid to settle a news service licensing issue before, I can empathize with anybody who wants to make this kind of thing go away. And that's Kevin Purdy from Ars Technica writing. I can tell you right now that I am very careful to not use photographs on the Internet unless I took them myself. And I know people out there say, well, you can use stock photos. You'll be fine. Or you can get photos from you know, these websites. You got to be careful with that stuff because someone can come along and go, oh, that website had no right to give that to you. So the only way you can know is if you took it yourself. So, which is why a new kind of angle on an angle scheme can seem both obvious to spot and likely effective. So a man who is a writer behind the newsletter Tedium received a DMCA copyright infringement notice in late March from Commonwealth Legal, representing the Intellectual Property Division of Tech for Gods. The issue was with a photo of a key fob from a legitimate photo service, Unsplash, used in service of a post about a strange Uber ride that Smith once took. So Smith is the writer. As Smith detailed in something he wrote, the purported firm needed him to add a credit to our client immediately through a link to Tech for Gods 
and said it should be addressed in the next five business days. Removing the image does not conclude the matter. And should he not take action, the firm says they'll activate a case and presumably they'll take him to court and sue him or do something else to him as a result of this. So they're saying, look, you've used this photo inappropriately. If you put a link to our client underneath the photo, we'll let you go. And so most people go, oh my gosh, they're threatening to sue me. That's what they want. No, they want you to put a link to their client on your article to build their SEO. So as Kevin Purdy, Ars Technica writes, there are quite a few issues with this request, as detailed by Smith and others. Chief among them is that Commonwealth Legal almost certainly does not exist. Now, supposedly it's a law from Arizona, but despite the 2018 copyright displayed on their site, the firm's website domain was seemingly registered in 2024 with a Canadian IP location. The address on the firm's site leads to a location that, to say the least, does not have a fourth floor. <laughs> While the law firm's website is stuffed full of stock images, so are many websites for professional services. The real tell is the site's list of attorneys, most of which have a vacant thousand-yard stare common to AI-generated faces. So AI detection from Reality Defender told these people that the service spotted AI generation in every attorney image on that site, most likely by a generative adversarial network model. Then there are the attorney bios, which offer surface-level competence underpinned by bizarre setups. Five of the 12 supposedly come from acclaimed law schools like Harvard, Yale, and Stanford, and the University of Chicago. The other seven seem to have graduated from the top five results you might get if you typed Arizona Law School into Google. So one of the attorneys has a practice based on copyright violation and judicial criminal proceedings, which would be very, very strange. Sometimes she is upholding the rights of artists, but she can also handle high-stakes criminal cases. <laughs> Why would someone go to the trouble of making a law firm out of Namecheap, stock art, and AI images to send quasi-legal demands to site owners? And it turns out it's all about the backlinks, those links back to their client. Backlinks are links from a site that Google or others hold in high esteem to a site trying to build its rankings whether spammed, traded, generated, or demanded through a fake firm, backlinks power the search engine optimization, and uh, that could do it. The owner of Tech for Gods told uh, somebody else in the media that he did buy backlinks for his gadget review site, uh, and he disclaimed owning the disputed image or any images and made suggestions that a disgruntled former contractor may be trying to poison his rankings with spam links. So we're not sure if that's true or not, but it turns out the guy who got the threat letter never responded to it and nothing ever happened. Now, I'm curious, though, if the following step from here could be a fake demand for money, because I've heard of that also. I've heard of people who've had photographs that they themselves took, put on their website, and they got contacted by somebody saying, uh, you violated our copyright. If you don't pay us this much money in this short period of time, we're going to sue you. It's going to cost you more than that to hire an attorney. You know, a threatening letter only costs whatever the paper was in the post, you know, a stamp, assuming it came through the mail. Uh, an emailed threatening letter costs even less, as you imagine, because there's no stamp. <laughs> I, I've been putting stamps in my email all this time. No. So <clears throat> this right here appears to be aimed at just getting those links up. But I suspect that when people hear about this story, they're going to go, wait a second. A fake AI law firm sending out fake threat letters. They could do that. And there have been companies that were doing that for a living, and it's, it's a scary concept. But I've had people call me and say, hey, Steve, I just got this letter from somebody saying they're going to sue me over something that <clears throat> I did it, but it doesn't appear to be against the law because I, like, I used my own photograph for something or whatever. And I always tell people, I say, look, threats are really easy to make. Um, so if you didn't do anything wrong... Just ignore it. Don't even respond to it. Because if you respond to it, they're going to go, oh, we've, 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 we've got a nibble here. Let's, let's, let's play with this person for a while. And I can tell you right now, I'm going to give you a little anecdote, and this is absolutely true because I've, I've dealt with this more than once. But there was a poem out there, a, a very, very popular poem uh, that was often read at funerals and was often printed alongside obituaries 
after somebody passed away. And the poem often appeared unattributed, where the author unknown, okay? And it turns out that if you do a lot of Google searching, you'll find out that the author is, in fact, known. Somebody, a long time ago, reprinted that poem without the attribution to the correct author. So people find this poem, and it's a beautiful poem, and they don't know who to credit it to. They go, oh, whatever, and they, and they print it in the program, for instance, to a, to a funeral service. And a few months later, the funeral home will get a, a letter saying, we represent the woman who wrote that poem. We see you published it without her permission. We demand that you pay us money. And they would just hammer these letters out all across America. And I was contacted by two different people who'd gotten that letter on that poem. And to the first person, I said, um, ignore it and see what happens. Nothing happened. To the second person, I said, well, based on the first person, <laughs> ignore it and see what will happen. Now, here's the thing. The person who wrote the poem does have a legitimate gripe that somebody reprinted her poem without attribution. There's no question about that. But when somebody sees a poem that's floating around out there like that, it's unattributed. And by the way, you can find it all over the place now where it's unattributed. Like, like you'd have to dig a bit to find out who, who wrote it. And you print it in a program, hand it out at a funeral to where maybe 50 people saw it. Again, technically, probably a violation, but it would be considered an inadvertent violation. And the question is, are they going to come to your state and sue you over that or not? And as far as I know, they never did. But that's just what it reminded me of because I've been called more than once about that one particular poem. So here... It appears that the fake law firms are sending out the fake threats to generate fake search engine optimization gains. But you could actually back it up one step and just simply send out the fake notices with the letters saying, we don't want to sue you, pay us a couple grand and we'll go away. And if somebody had used a photograph they had no rights to, maybe they'd pay it. You never know. So scary concept. But David and Kevin both sent it from Ars Technica, and Kevin Purdy wrote that, how one journalist found himself targeted by a generative AI over a key fob photo, and he had done nothing wrong. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. People who exercise their brains stay young in spirit.